Welcome to the second video series on this channel, where we focus on the mathematical concepts behind quadcopter drone control. Today, we will have a look at how you can mathematically simulate the quadcopter dynamics. In the previous video, we learned how to simulate the gyroscope and motors mathematically. The dynamics of the quadcopter itself can be simulated by considering the different movements separately. Roll, pitch, yaw and vertical velocity. The four transfer functions that describe these movements will form the quadcopter dynamics. Let's start with the roll movement. In our previous video series, we learned how a drone can perform a roll motion around the x-axis by simply increasing the output of motors 3 and 4 while decreasing the output of motors 1 and 2. This means that in order to rotate the quadcopter in the roll direction, you apply a torque around the stationary x-axis, torque x. The resulting angular acceleration in the roll direction depends on this applied torque, but also on the distribution of the mass of the object that you roll around. This mass distribution is described by the moment of inertia, called Ix. To get the angular acceleration in degrees per square second, just multiply the equation in radians per square second with 180 degrees divided by pi. Let's start by developing the equation to express the torque around the x-axis. First, we will redraw our quadcopter movement in a two-dimensional plane, perpendicular with the stationary x-axis. It is clear that the higher thrust from the motors 3 and 4 compared to the motors 2 and 1 will result in a torque around the x-axis in the clockwise direction which eventually leads to a roll angle. The torque from motors 3 and 4 is given by multiplying the thrust of both with the distance of the motors to the center of the drone, which is 8 cm in our case. This torque will be counteracted by the torque from motors 1 and 2, meaning that you will have to subtract this value to get the total torque around the x-axis. In the previous video, we saw how you can determine the thrust from a brushless motor which was equal to 160 multiplied by a throttle value between 0 and 1 for our GEPRC motor. To get the thrust in Newton, multiply this equation with the gravitational constant divided by 1000 to go from gram to kilogram. Because you input a motor value between 0 and 1000 in the flight controller code instead of a value between 0 and 1, Divide the roll input by 1000 as well. Now that we have an equation expressing the motor thrust, the resulting torque can easily be calculated. Because the value of the roll input is equal for all four motors, but has a positive sign for motors 3 and 4, and a negative one for motors 1 and 2, the resulting equation is simply 4 times the motor thrust multiplied by the distance of the motor to the x-axis. With this new equation for the torque, let's continue with the moment of inertia Ix. The moment of inertia describes the weight distribution of the drone and the distance of all components to the stationary x-axis. Using once again a two-dimensional approximation, this time seen from above the quadcopter, the moment of inertia can be calculated using the equation on screen. Most weight of the quadcopter is situated very close to the x-axis, making their contribution to the moment of inertia negligible. The only components with a non-negligible weight that are sufficiently far from the x-axis are the four motors and the ESCs. The equation simplifies to four times the mass of each motor, multiplied with the distance of the motor to the x-axis. The contribution of the weight for the ESCs and their distance to the x-axis needs to be added as well. We now have an expression for the torque around the x-axis and for the moment of inertia as well. Implementing both equations allows us to describe the acceleration in the roll direction explicitly. It only depends on the roll input given to the motors, which needs to be multiplied by 115. The acceleration in the roll direction can be transformed to the rotation rate in the roll direction by considering it to be the derivative of the acceleration. As seen in part 1, you can now easily perform a Laplace transform, giving you the transfer function for the roll dynamics of your drone in the frequency domain. 
because the quadcopter is almost perfectly symmetric, the transfer function of the pitch movement can be considered to be the same as for the roll movement, which means that our calculations result in two identical transfer functions. Going back to our control loop, we can now implement the transfer function for the roll and pitch movement, which is surprisingly simple as well. Let's now continue with the yaw movement. Once again, the yaw movement was explained in part 11 of the previous series. To perform a yaw movement, simply increase the output of the motors 2 and 4 while simultaneously decreasing the output of motors 1 and 3. The equation expressing the yaw acceleration is similar as before, with the only exception being that you need to calculate the torque and the moment of inertia around the z-axis instead of the x-axis. To calculate the torque around the z-axis, let's represent the quadcopter once again in two dimensions, this time with a fixed z-axis. In this case, the torque around the z-axis is equal to the sum of all four motor torques. Notice that the torque is always opposite to the rotation direction of each motor. When a motor is spinning in a clockwise direction, the force of the air pushed against the propellers creates a torque in the counterclockwise direction. Thus, the total torque around the z-axis can be expressed with the equation on the screen. The torque for each motor is related to the motor current through the torque coefficient kT. This torque coefficient kT can be estimated using the kV rating of the motor, which is for our GR1105 motor, equal to 5000 kV or 5000 RPM per volt. We already determined the current consumed by one motor in part 1 by the formula on the screen, which has already been corrected for yaw input between 0 and 1000 instead of a throttle between 0 and 1. The value for the yaw input is equal for all four motors, but has a positive sign for the motors 2 and 4 and a negative sign for motors 1 and 3, resulting in the torque formula on the screen. Now that we know the torque around the z-axis, let's continue with the moment of inertia around the z-axis. Let's reuse the two-dimensional representation of the quadcopter drone seen before. Notice that to calculate the moment of inertia around the z-axis, not only the distance of the mass to the x-axis matters, but also the distance of the mass to the y-axis. This is different compared to the moment of inertia around the x-axis seen before, as the two-dimensional representation in that case meant that the distance to both y-axis and z-axis was approximated as being zero. Once again, only the components with a considerable mass that are far enough from the drone x and y-axis are the motors and the ESCs. First, multiply the mass of the four motors with their respective distances to the x and y axes. Next, multiply the mass of the four ESCs with their respective distances to the x and the y axes and add them together to obtain the moment of inertia. Now we develop the equations necessary to calculate the acceleration in the yaw direction. Integrating them in the equation eventually gives another very simple transfer function after doing a Laplace transform similar to the one seen earlier. This means that we now have a third transfer function that describes the quadcopter drone yaw dynamics. Let's end our calculations with a transfer function for the vertical velocity. To increase the altitude of the drone, all motors simply need to increase their power output. The mathematical description of the quadcopter dynamics along the stationary z-axis is rather intuitive. The resulting acceleration along this axis is equal to the thrust delivered by the motors minus the gravity acting on the quadcopter mass. This force balance is expressed by the equation on the screen. We already calculated the thrust of all four motors, allowing you to simplify the equation. In the flight controller, you assume that the throttle should be at around half its power, or 1500 microseconds, for the motors to cancel out gravity. This means you can drop this term in the equation. Knowing that the mass of the quadcopter is equal to 250 grams and the flight controller worked with centimeter per second and not meter per second, the transfer function becomes 2.5 times the throttle input. After doing the Laplace transform once again, 
we now have our final transfer function for the vertical velocity. This means we have characterized the quadcopter dynamics for the roll, pitch, yaw and vertical velocity movements. Combined with the motor dynamics, you can simulate the response of the system to a command in the time domain. This is called the open loop system response and the results for all movements are visualized on the graph. The value of the nominator is the only part that changes for each of the quadcopter dynamics functions. You see that transfer functions with large nominators, such as the roll and pitch, have a much faster response than transfer functions with smaller nominators. Physically, the behavior of the open loop system means that you can control the vertical velocity of the quadcopter manually and you do not necessarily need a control loop. The first rate controller you developed did not have a vertical velocity control, yet you were able to control the altitude of the quadcopter pretty well by constantly adjusting the throttle. It's a different story with the roll, pitch and yaw rate. Trying to manually control these rates is practically impossible for the reaction times of a human being. That is why the rate mode flight controller is the minimal controller you need to fly your quadcopter. In the next video, we will simulate the transfer function of our PID controller itself to be able to complete the full control loop. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full drawing code on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub, if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.